Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the press right now is anxiously awaiting word on whether LeBron James decides to stay in Miami. <clears throat> Just understand that whether he decides to stay in Miami or not, it's over for the Miami Heat. And I mean over. They're not going to be a team, quite frankly, that rises to the top again anytime soon. Right. Let's talk about the events in Miami, and let's be straight up and real about it. The world has changed in the last four years. Right, Guys who ruled the roost four years ago, many of them no longer rule the roost. It's a myth that it's the same group of superstars dominating any sport year after year. In reality, what I've learned is there's great turnover. Right, While perhaps a LeBron James is a perennial superstar, there are very few others. So, let's look at the Miami Heat. Four years ago, we talked about the big three. Right, LeBron, Bosh, and Wade were all supposed to be superstars. Now, we throw around the term superstar. Understand that right now, it's no longer the big three. It's LeBron and two other guys. Right, it's LeBron and two other very good players. Now we understand whatever the egos are of the group. This group as they're currently composed cannot be a healthy San Antonio Spur team. They can't. Right? We also know too, again, regardless of the egos involved, that the Eastern Conference, simply put, is not as good as the Western Conference. Teams like the Atlanta Hawks can't even dream of making the playoffs in the Western Conference. In the Eastern Conference, they were the eighth seed, and they were there in the playoffs winning games against the one seed, the Indiana Pacers. Right? So, <clears throat> looking at the Heat, I don't think with the big three and Shabazz Napier, I don't think the Heat have enough talent-wise to compete against the top level in the Western Conference. Right? They don't. Let's get real, too. I understand the big three, right? And that's an anachronistic term, right? Big three. It's really big one and supporting cast. But I understand the big three are giving Pat Riley extra time to upgrade the roster, right? You and I know that just that scenario hints at a dysfunction that can't be solved, right? Pat Riley is not going to get enough talent back in a league with limits, a league with a salary cap, to offset the talent gap between the Miami Heat and the San Antonio Spurs. Right? Who's he going to pick up? Will Chamberlain? When's the last time the Miami Heat had a dominant center? Who's the guy on the roster right now? Greg Oden? Right? You're hearing of people like Shane Battier leaving. And I know many Heat fans will say, well, Shane Battier's skills had diminished. Right? Well, Ray Allen, he was an older guy just playing out the string with us. Understand, as recently as a year ago, Shane Battier was a key defensive member of Miami's rotation. Understand this year, if you want to talk about Ray Allen, look at the minutes he played. Don't, don't listen to my opinion. Look at the minutes he played in the NBA Finals. These are major contributors. So, Ray Allen, let's say he comes back. 
you know, any team with Ray Allen in serious rotation is going to have defensive holes. Any team with Rashard Lewis in a meaningful rotation is going to have defensive holes. Did you see Dwayne Wade's defense in the NBA Finals? Folks, he has a bad knee. There's only so much Mother Nature can do to get you back in the saddle. Dwayne Wade no longer is the defender he once was. Take a hard look at Chris Bosch's numbers. He's not a dominant rebounder these days. He's not a dominant scorer these days. As I look at it, the Miami Heat are more of a media story these days than they are a real story. So let's hope that this is all play acting. Let me also point out too, there's a salary issue here. You're Dwayne Wade. You're older. You've done a lot for the Miami Heat franchise. You won a title with the Heat before LeBron got there. Right? If you didn't opt out of your deal, you'd be making more than $20 million a year for the next two years. Right? People understand that that's a higher amount than you would get on the free market now. Right? That's one of the benefits of signing a long-term deal. You're paid on past performance, not current performance, not even future expectation. So here you had Dwayne Wade about to win the lottery. He opts out. Chris Bosh opts out. Why? Because they're going to do whatever they can to see if they can keep this team together. Right? So they're going to have to make some financial concessions. Now we're here and according to reports, and let's hope the reports are wrong, that LeBron James is seriously thinking of staying with the Heat, but he wants max money. Now let me just say, perhaps on July 1st or before next season, <clears throat> no one has a problem with a co-worker making more money than them. Let me tell you, when the bullets start flying, if this team is not on the inside post with a clear path to an NBA championship, if you're there, let's say you're Dwayne Wade and you've sacrificed $10 million a year just so you could have these specific teammates, and if the team starts off poorly, I'm just telling you, that's an atmosphere that's conducive to resentment and dissension right LeBron James shouldn't want teammates to give up a lot of money guaranteed money just so they could play with him while he makes max money that works before there's the realization among the players that a they might not be good enough to win the NBA championship. And B, they're being paid less than they were guaranteed to make before they opted out of the deal. Right? So, put me among the skeptics on the Miami Heat. To the gamblers, I say when they reopen the futures window, even if the big three, I'll be charitable, even if the big three all resign with the Heat. When they reopen the futures window, if the Heat are back as the favorites to win next year, you'll know they're overvalued and other teams are undervalued. That other teams, quite frankly, at the posted odds, offer a better value and a more realistic chance of winning the NBA title than the Miami Heat. Right? Understand, there is no one, in my opinion, who the Miami Heat can pick up, given their limitations on the salary cap, that's going to allow them to offset the talent gap with not only the Spurs, but with other teams in the Western Conference. Right? The longer the Clippers are together, for example, right? Especially without the backdrop of the Donald Sterling saga, that depleting backdrop the greater the chance that they rise up and hit a stride, hit a pace 
that the Miami Heat can't match. The longer the Golden State Warriors are together. And we're just talking about talent now. Right? The greater the chance that sooner or later people realize that today a Dwayne Wade with a bad knee might not be able to handle Clay Thompson. Right? So, fade the Miami Heat regardless of what happens. Right? I'll agree that if the Heat find a way to convince Carmelo Anthony to accept minimum wage, to join the big three, to join LeBron in Miami, okay, I'll do a follow-up video where I eat crow. That's unlikely to happen. That's unlikely to happen. Right? I'm hearing talk of Kyle Lowry ending up with the Miami Heat. Understand, Kyle Lowry still leaves the Heat with a huge hole underneath the basket. Weren't that Tim Duncan, Tiago Splitter, and others giving the Heat matchup problems underneath the basket in the playoffs? How would Kyle Lowry solve that? Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.